Welcome to video two of the unit four series. So we're continuing to learn about cell communication and cell cycle. And today we are gonna focus on signal transduction. So this is units 4.2, 4.3, and 4.4. All right, so here we have a diagram with not a lot shown in terms of labels. So see if you can figure any of this out. What is this diagram showing? Focus on the overall process, but then also see if you can name each step shown above. So this overall process is called signal transduction. There are three main steps, reception, transduction, and response. So you can see in reception is where the receptor meets with the signal molecule. Notice that the signal molecule never itself moves inside. Instead, what happens is the reception changes some part of the receptor, which um, triggers a transduction pathway, a signal transduction pathway. So there are then a series of changes, a series of molecules triggered, and then it ends in some sort of response. Note that the response can take place anywhere in the cell, including changing the membrane proteins, molecules in the cytosol, or DNA in the nucleus. So here it's showing it inside of the cell, um, but it could be in the nucleus, it could be on the, on the membrane, could be kind of anywhere. All right, so at the heart of it, signal transduction pathways link the signal reception with a cellular response. I think it's helpful with so much vocab in biology to focus on the root words. Now this question I'm not expecting you to get right before you've seen this video, but um, just give it a shot. Maybe you've heard some of these words in other contexts. What do you think is the meaning of the root word trans and the root word duct? So trans means across and duct means to lead. So transduction means to lead across. So what we're leading across is the signal across the membrane. Now notice it's not the signal molecule, but it's the signal itself. So the message is getting across without the actual molecule needing to cross the membrane. All right, to focus on that transduction part of signal transduction, that um, sort of blue part in the, in the middle, that transduction number two, I want you to notice that this often includes protein modification and what's called phosphorylation cascades. So to understand what a phosphorylation cascade is, I want to talk about what a cascade is in general. So a cascade, maybe you're more familiar with this in terms of a waterfall. So it's a series of small steps, right? So like in a waterfall, instead of the water just going from the top to the bottom in one big chunk, it's a series of small steps. So how do the terms upstream and downstream apply both to a river, but also to signaling? So upstream is what happens first, downstream is what happens later. Um, the, the importance of this is that aspects of what happens upstream can be very impactful on what happens downstream. So if there is an upstream change, so a change in something happening early in the cascade, this can have a big effect. One way of thinking about that is if we block one aspect of this cascade, blocking something at the very top of that cascade is going to have a bigger impact than if we block a bit at the bottom. Because if we block something at the top, that's going to affect all of the different aspects that connect to it. And you can see um, maybe that little bit of waterfall kind of in the center there, you can see how many different pathways that takes. So if you change the top of that, something upstream, that can have um, real big effects on everything downstream. So here is an example of a signal transduction pathway. This specific example is G protein signaling pathway. G proteins is a very common type of signal transduction, um, but I wanna make sure that we um, focus on the big picture here first. So first of all, in looking at this signal transduction pathway, there's something that's really important in signal transduction pathways shown here that was not shown in that first diagram. What is it and how is it shown? The aspect I wanted you to see that was shown here that wasn't shown in the previous um, depiction of a signal transduction pathway is amplification. So amplification is where one um, molecule can then trigger many, many more molecules downstream. So for example, you see protein kinase A here triggers three phosphorylated proteins. And then those phosphorylated proteins go on to have um, a response on many different molecules. So amplification is where we can have just a single signal molecule ending with a large scale response. 
To focus on the big picture here, I want you to identify those three major steps of signal transduction that we saw in the previous diagram. See if you can find them here. So the three major steps of signal transduction are reception, transduction, and response. You can see reception happening where the signal molecule re reaches the uh, receptor. You can see transduction as sort of those in-between steps, and then the response is down below. It's unclear exactly what this response is. This is, again, still a generalized picture, but there are those three major components. If we zoom in a little bit more, I want you to figure out what's happening more specifically in each of these steps. So see the green circles there, one, two, three, four, five. See if you can explain from this diagram what's happening in each of those steps. The first step is the same as the first step we saw in the generalized signal transduction pathway, which is reception. To make it a little bit more specific to this example, where we have G-protein signaling pathway, the signal molecule binds to a specialized receptor, which is called a G-protein coupled receptor. What that means is the receptor is tied to a special protein called a G-protein. When that signal molecule binds, it changes the shape of it so that then the G protein uh, can go on and cause more changes down the cascade. So this is what we see in, in parts two through five. This is the signal transduction portion of this. So first in step two, we see the activated G protein activates adenylyl cyclase. Number three, adenylyl cyclase converts ATP to cyclic AMP. Number four, we see that that cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A, which is also called PKA. CAMP, I should point out, is called a second messenger. This is a really common second messenger in a lot of signaling pathways. Um, and it's a second messenger because it's a non-protein component of signal transduction. There are other second messengers, but CAMP is a very common one. So as I said before, CAMP, its job in this uh, pathway is to activate PKA. In step five, you can see that PKA then phosphorylates other proteins. And the final step, although it doesn't have a number on this diagram, is still important. This is the final step of the signal transduction pathway in general, which is response. And again, this diagram keeps it pretty vague. We can't really tell what the cellular response is. It looks like a whole lot of some molecule has been generated. Um, so we can just say that the phosphorylated proteins lead to a specific cell response. So let's get a more specific example. You don't need to focus on the details here, but just focus on the overall process of signal transduction. So once again, what are those three steps of signal transduction? Those three major steps of signal transduction are reception, transduction, and response. So here we can see reception with the cytokine in red um, binding with the cytokine receptors. We can see that at the top. And then the transduction we can see in kind of the center here. But focus on that response. What response is shown here? And then also what might be some other types of responses not shown here? The response shown here is a change in gene expression. And we can see that is at the very end, it says target gene transcription. And so this then, the um, cytokines in this case are triggering a cascade that ends with a gene being transcribed, turning into mRNA. Other types of responses can include a change in the cell metabolism, protein synthesis, changes in protein activation, cell growth or division, or even cell death. The reason I wanted to bring up cytokines is that you may have heard of a phenomenon called a cytokine storm. So um, cytokines are part of the immune system and are a really important part of our immune system. So these are usually beneficial. But a cytokine storm is where you have an overwhelming cytokine response. So there's actually sort of overproduction here, and the immune cells begin attacking healthy organs. This can result in organ damage, organ failure, and even mortality. So again, you don't need to focus on the details here, but you can see that the cytokines, which we just talked about as part of um, sort of an example of signal transduction can play a big role in our health. So let's look at another specific example. This example is a CFTR channel. So how is this a representation of signal transduction? See if you can find those three major parts of signal transduction in this diagram. The three steps of signal transduction are reception, transduction, and response. 
The reception you can see in the upper left of this diagram, the blue circle represents our signal molecule, and that's bound to our receptor. Our receptor in this case is GPCR, which stands for G-protein coupled receptor. So just like we saw in a diagram a few slides back, this is a specific example of a G-protein signaling pathway. So we can see the transduction step, that second part of uh, signal transduction, in the center, sort of within the cell, underneath the plasma membrane. In this case, what happens is our activated G protein causes an activation of adenylyl cyclase, which activates CAMP, which activates protein kinase A, which in turn phosphorylates a protein. So that's the transduction portion. So what is the specific response shown here? Well, the response indicated here in this diagram is the opening of a chlorine channel. That channel is called CFTR. And CFTR only opens if it's phosphorylated, if the protein that is the channel is phosphorylated by protein kinase A. So this whole signal transduction pathway ends with the phosphorylation of the CFTR protein channel. When that is phosphorylated, it opens, allowing passage of chlorine through it. To put this in context, the CFTR channel activation is an example of G-protein signaling. G-protein signaling itself is an example of signal transduction. The reason I'm showing you this particular example is that it is highly relevant in our lives. The CFTR channel is involved in both cholera and cystic fibrosis, which are diseases that affect a large number of people around the world. So if you understand these, um, this signaling pathway, you'll better understand these diseases. So that's it for this video. We have covered units 4.2, 4.3, and 4.4 of AP Biology, which is signal transduction.